Hello everyone. Today we are discussing about the buccinator muscle. This is a short essay question. Let us see how to present this answer and let us understand about this muscle. So if this muscle is asked in the exam, you will have to present it under the following headings. First you will have to introduce this muscle where this muscle is present in the face. Then you will write about the origin and the insertion of the muscle. You will write about the structures which pierce this muscle. You will write about the actions, nerve supply of this muscle and the applied aspect. So first we will introduce the muscle. This is the muscle of the cheek and it is quadrilateral in shape. So the muscle you are seeing here, this is the buccinator muscle. Let us see its origin. So the buccinator muscle arises from the maxilla opposite the three molar tooth. It arises from the mandible opposite the three molar tooth from anterior oblique line of the mandible. It also arises from a raphe which is called as pterygomandibular raphe. Let us see about this raphe in the next slide. So in this slide you are seeing a raphe here that is known as pterygomandibular raphe. This raphe is attached to the pterygoid hamulus of the medial pterygoid plate. So the plate here you have is known as the medial pterygoid plate and you have an hamulus there to this hamulus is attached our pterygomandibular raphe. On the mandible this raphe is attached behind the last molar tooth. So this raphe separates the buccinator muscle in the front from the superior, mus uh, superior constrictor muscle which is the muscle of the pharynx behind. So this buccinator muscle it arises from three structures namely the maxilla opposite the three molar tooth, the mandible opposite the three molar tooth in the anterior oblique line. It also arises from pterygomandibular raphe. Now let us see about the insertion of this muscle. Insertion is very simple. The upper fibers will pass on to the upper lip. The lower fibers will pass on to the lower lip. The middle fibers will decusate at the angle of the mouth. What is the meaning of that? The upper fibers will pass on to the lower lip and the lower fibers will pass on to the upper lip. So this is about the insertion of the buccinator muscle. Now not to forget this buccinator muscle on the outer aspect on the outer aspect it is covered by a fascia and that fascia is known as buccopharyngeal fascia what is this fascia this fascia it covers the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx and it passes on anteriorly to cover the buccinator muscle as well on the inner aspect the buccinator muscle it is um, uh, it is covered by the muco mucosa of the vestibule of the mouth Now let us see the nerve supply of this muscle. The buccinator is supplied by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. So this nerve you are seeing here is the facial nerve. So the buccinator muscle is supplied by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. We will see what are the structures which will pierce this buccinator muscle. So one structure you are seeing here is the parotid duct from the parotid gland. This is a parotid gland here. So from the parotid gland comes out a parotid duct. This parotid duct will pierce the buccinator muscle. So this is one structure. There is another structure we will see in the next slide. So we also have the buccal nerve which is a branch of the mandibular nerve. Even this structure pierces the buccinator muscle. So there are two structures piercing the buccinator muscle. One is the parotid duct from the parotid gland. Other one is the buccal branch of the mandibular nerve. Let us see what are the actions performed by this muscle. So what happens is during mastication, the buccinator muscle, it will press the cheek against the gum and the teeth and thereby it helps in mastication by preventing the accumulation of the food in the vestibule. And also, this muscle helps in blowing a trumpet by, you can see in this diagram, by forcefully expelling the air from the uh, lips with the vestibule being inflated. 
so it helps to blow a trumpet and that is why it's also called as trumpeter's muscle so that is about the actions performed by this muscle now what happens let us see the applied aspect if this muscle is paralyzed so what happens mainly uh during mastication or chewing the food the food will accumulate within the vestibule of the mouth and thereby the uh, the patient the, they will have to manually remove the accumulated food from the vestibule so that is the applied aspect of this muscle 